Welcome to a new how-to series where I'll be explaining basic programming on the Commodore 64 with the end goal to make a fully functional game. Learning to program a computer is a bit like learning to play football. Theoretically, you could learn football by practicing one skill at a time, stepping out onto the pitch for an actual game only when you have mastered every move. But you would learn slowly and have very little fun in the process. Similarly, with programming, one way is to plough your way through a manual which teaches one function at a time, but never how to combine them. A better way is to step out onto the pitch and start playing. So, where do you begin? The easiest of all home computer games to program is the one in which the computer invents a random number and the player tries to guess what it is. Okay, so let's start with 10. Let x equal rnd, that stands for random, 1, enter, 20, print, x, 30, go to 10. Now, when you run this program, all you will get will be a string of long decimalized fractions, far too hard for a guessing game. And this is because the computer randomly chooses a number between 0 and 0 0.9 recurring. So, how can we get the computer to produce only whole numbers? Well, it's by putting int, short for integer or whole number, in front of the RND, thus. This generates a whole number between 0 and 5. Just remember to press return after each line. Now, you're not limited to using a range of numbers from 0 to 5, you could equally well choose 10 or even 10,000. But this would make the guessing game very hard indeed. Allow me to just talk you through the RND function. RND is the command itself. In front of it, in brackets, is an argument, which can either be a positive number, negative or zero. Because computers are based on logic, random is quite an elusive thing, so a positive number will tell the computer to jump in at the point you specify in a predetermined sequence held in ROM, in this case point 1. A negative number will jump back, and 0 will base a random number on the Commodore's internal clock, between 0 and 60. The multiplication by 6 simply converts the decimal to a number between 1 and 5, because multiplying 0.9 by 6 would be 5.4, whilst 0.2 by 6 would be 1.2. The int command rounds these numbers down to their integer. 5.4 becomes 5, 1.2 becomes 1. In writing the short program above, you have not only selected a random number, but also given it a name, x. From now on, whenever x crops up, the computer will know you mean that random number you just thought of. Such a name, which allows the computer to identify a number, so that it can compare it with another number, or multiply it, or divide it, or whatever you wish, is called a variable. Having generated the random number, the next step is to warn the computer to accept your guess at what the number is. To do this, you use the input statement. This tells the computer to wait until some information has been typed in. Input by itself, however, means nothing. The computer must have a name by which it can identify the data it will receive. So as before, a variable is used. In this case, it is G for guess. But it doesn't have to be. It could be any other letter or combination of letters or even the whole word guess if you feel that energetic. And now that your computer knows the secret number it has generated and your guess, it can compare the two. This is done in a very similar way to ordinary English. The if-then statement is clearly a very useful one. In programming, you will use it over and over again. Some programs I've made in the past have been pretty much built on that statement. On the Commodore machine, the computer will automatically skip to the next line of the program if the two numbers are not equal. OK, so here's our previous program still in memory. If we type in new, then that will wipe our memory and we can start afresh. So. If we go 20 let x equal int and uh, rand 1, just as we did before, times by 6, OK, there we go, 30, we're going to have print. The computer has chosen a number between 0 and 
five. Can you guess it? Question mark. Okay, then we're going to have line 40, input G. And as we've spoken about just now, this asks for input from the user. We're going to jump to line 60 and have if G uh, equals X, then print. Well done. So that's comparing our G value to the X value we assigned at the start in line 20. And then line 80, if we're, we're, I'm, I'm doing line 80, I'm jumping by 20 just to allow some space in between to put extra lines of code if we need them. It doesn't really matter as long as they're in sequence. The computer will follow whatever numbers are in sequence. Okay, so 80, if G, and then this means not equal to X, then print. Oh. Tough. Can't spell. Tough luck. You. Wrong. Okay, so if you run this program, you can see that it is playable, but only just. To begin with, the screen is a bit cluttered, and on top of that, the game expires after just one go. Now, to deal with the first problem, all you need to do is enter this. Okay, so we're going to enter a new line at the start of this program, so line 10, because the program originally started at line 20, and this is how, how you tell the Commodore to clear its screen. You uh, print this heart shape, which is obtained by pressing the uh, clear home button inside the quotation marks, like so. So now if we run it, there we go, it clears the screen. To deal with the second problem is slightly harder. One way round it would be to enter this. Okay, if we add another line at the end of the program, line 90, go to 10, this tells it to go back to line 10 where it gets to the end of the program. So if we run it now, it'll keep rerunning the program every time. And that restarts the game automatically by telling the computer to go back to instruction line 10 and then it goes through the sequence of commands in order. Now, a better way might be to offer the player the chance of another game if he or she wants it. And this may sound complicated, but in practice, it is quite straightforward. Okay, so here's our existing code, and we're going to make a few changes. So, the first one is line 50. We're going to add in, and we're going to print another clear screen. There we go. Line 60 is going to change, so we can overtype line 60 by just typing line 60 and typing the code in. So if G equals X, then print. Well done. And then we're going to add a colon, and after that, go to 90. Now, the colon is essentially the same as having a new line of code. It runs the first part and then it runs the second part after the colon. Okay, 80 is going to be print. Tough luck. You're wrong. 90 will be print. Do you want another go. If so, please type Y and press the return key. Line 100 will be input A dollar, and I'll talk about that in a second. 110 will be if A dollar equals Y then go to 10 and then line 120 will be go to 100 so okay as you can see first you ask the player and that's in line 90 if she wants another game then to warn the computer to expect an answer you use in line 100 the input statement 
This time, however, there is an important difference. After line 20, the player entered a number. This time, he is going to enter Y for yes or N for no. Not a number, but a letter. This means at line 100, instead of input A, you must use input A dollar. Now, in basic terminology, the dollar sign is called a string, and a string is known as a string variable. So why is the string or dollar sign necessary? To understand this, you need to know a great deal about how the computer stores and handles input. And we'll get to this in more detail at a later time. For now, the important point to remember is when the computer is expecting a number, you use input A, input B, input X or whatever. And when the computer is expecting a letter or word, you must use input A dollar, input B dollar, input X dollar or whatever. Line 120 is included so that if a player does not want another game immediately, the computer waits until he does by repeating the process until the answer does equal Y. It does this by repeatedly jumping back to line 100 until a Y key press. After that, line breaks the cycle. So let's take a look at the entire program in action. The computer has chosen a number between 0 and 5. Can you, oh yo, guess it? Tough luck, you're wrong. Do you want another go? If I press Y, we get another go. Tough luck, you're wrong. Yes, another go. Tough luck, you're wrong. Yes. Tough luck, you're wrong. Tough luck, you're wrong. <laughs> Tough luck, you're wrong. It's never ending. Well done. Do you want another go? No. And then it will just recur back to the question and just wait for your answer. If you want to remove line 120, you can. And then when you type N, it will just exit the program. Otherwise, you have to break out of it. And that concludes this first lesson on BASIC. Join me next time for some more BASIC programming. Feel free to watch a video from the past. Subscribe, contribute to my Patreon, or just leave. It's up to you. Anyway, thanks for watching, and as usual, good night.